they could have probably put in a little more effort. Uh, what can be more cool than that? And I'm glad to report that it works brilliantly. And I don't blame the Z9 for this. Many people have had numerous expectations. But the question is, when you look at a 25,600 ISO image, is it usable? I cannot express that enough. I mean, there aren't many cameras that have made me feel uh, that way. I could just never hear a thing. I know the Z9 is the future. Nikon has no obligation to keep serving their age-old customers from 50 years ago forever. At some point, you have to look towards the future and build a mount that is robust and contemporary and can help you take the step uh, in a forward direction and not keep looking back in your mirror. All of that is completely understood. But I still think that they could have probably put in a little more effort uh, to give some sort of basic autofocus compatibility for non-AFS lenses. I'm not saying I would have expected them to perform as well as Z lenses, of course not. I mean, that would be ridiculous. But on the other hand, uh, what is a huge hit is the performance with AFS lenses, like my 80 to 200 mm f2.8, with which I tested it, and it absolutely flew. I mean, fantastic autofocus no problem at all. By the way, this was with uh, the FTZ2 adapter. I did not have the opportunity to use the older one in case you have the FTZ1. Okay, next is autofocus. And I think this is where many people have had numerous expectations, numerous questions. I've been absolutely flooded with queries about how well the autofocus performs, what are the correct settings to use for various situations. Uh, and what works, what doesn't. If you look beyond the maze of specifications and features and just cut to the chase, it really is very simple. First is focus acquisition. And this I will classify as a bit of a miss, not because it's bad, but because it's not the miraculous, futuristic, radical uh, focus acquisition jump that we were expecting it to be or if you are expecting it to have so that is not the case there are no miracles on offer here so when it comes to let us say an average aperture lens like the 100 to 400 mm that i was using it with which is f5.6 even in good light if you don't have sufficient experience and if you're in the wrong settings the Z9 may still fail to pick up your subject when it suddenly appears in your frame, okay? Uh, especially if it is too close or too far and too fast, <laughs> okay? In, in other words, unless the, the conditions are ideal, the Z9 does not pull any miracles out of the air. Because as you can see from this footage, uh, there were at least two instances during my test where this happened. Which also brings me to the next point of AF area selection. Now, a lot of people are expecting the Z9 to perform brilliantly in completely automatic AF area selection mode. But for at least for wildlife, I really wouldn't go with that. Based on my experience testing the Z9, I will not trust the completely automatic AF area mode, even when face recognition is turned on and eye recognition is turned on and i don't blame the z9 for this by the way i don't blame the z9 because i don't expect the camera to know exactly what i want because then that would absolutely supersede and supplant my need the, pho the need of a photographer right we still want the photographer to be able to define the subject and decide and determine what should be in focus the camera's job is just to then implement that command and bring the desired subject into focus. That is its role. But the good news is that 3D tracking is absolutely back with a bang. 3D tracking has been a bit of a frustrating experience for me to say the least in the past because conceptually, I mean, I have raved about it in workshops and classrooms, uh, but in DSLRs, it's always been disappointing because it moves about a little too much. It gets very easily confused and put off. Um, and it's very hesitant, very fidgety, 
and you never have the confidence to actually engage it and keep it because you can lose that subject any moment but not in the z9 in the z9 the 3d tracking is extremely sure very assured very calm very composed it does not jump about all over the frame like it does with um, in dslrs typically even with my d780 uh, it feels very tight it feels very sticky and the best part is in conjunction with the face and eye recognition turned on it works like an absolute charm right i wouldn't say it's infallible but it certainly works much much more often than not and which brings me to the topic of uh, face and eye recognition uh, it has three modes of course automatic or humans or people and uh, sorry did i say humans and people no automatic animals and people of course humans are also animals but uh, other animals than people uh, i have to say that it works very very well uh, in my limited testing i saw that whether you use automatic or you use the appropriate mode when you're shooting people or animals it did pick up uh, not just the face uh, but exactly the eye or eyes if both the eyes are in front which is not the case with many animals i mean they have the eyes on the sides uh, including many birds and now combined with 3d tracking where you start by defining the point where you want the focus and then you keep the shutter button half pressed the z9 sticks to it like absolute glue and therefore focus tracking which is the other aspect of focus apart from focus acquisition that is once the camera has managed to acquire focus on your subject how well can it continue to keep the focus on it is absolutely fantastic i think this is where the z9 absolutely excels and hits the ball out of the park its ability to stick to the subject tracking it even when when it's coming head on uh, and of course it's flying all over the place uh, across the the lens is simply brilliant even at a staggering 120 frames per second it was able to retain focus on the bird in almost every single frame which is a very very credible uh, and worthy achievement especially at shallow depths of field no complaints at all in terms of focus tracking for me the z9 is a fabulous tracking camera and of course uh, at the time of the recording uh, of this video the new z400 mmf 2.8 with the built in teleconverter has been launched and uh, from what we've seen from the tests uh, limited tests available from the pre production units uh, it looks like that lens is going to team up with the z9 to absolutely redefine shooting something that is traveling towards you uh i mean that combination is absolutely on fire and so the z9 is just the perfect kind of hardware uh, that you need if you shoot a lot of birds in flight or sports and uh, things that involve a lot of action okay af area coverage absolute hit nothing to complain about like with most mirrorless cameras you have edge to edge coverage you don't really have to worry about focus points and the camera just takes care of it especially when you're using 3d tracking not a problem at all AF noiselessness is also another impressive feat especially with the Z100 to 400 mm that I was using I could just never hear a thing and that is completely novel to a DSLR user like me uh, being completely used to the autofocus mode of worrying and worrying all the time <laughs> going back and forth uh, it was an entirely new experience uh, this is new level of ultrasonic that Nikon has achieved here and very impressive how fast exactly is it really uh, 20 fps of course i already mentioned is fast enough for most things and while it would have been nice to have 30 fps just to match the sony a1 i really think it's completely unnecessary even for wildlife photography because as you can see from this series of pictures <clears throat> i've managed to nail down a pigeon uh, which is one of the faster birds right which took off unexpectedly and flew straight towards me and then away I don't really see wanting to or needing to shoot more frames than this in a second of a bird in flight. And even if you look at this parakeet uh, which again took off unexpectedly uh, and this is a rather medium tight frame but despite that I managed what uh, four frames before it went out of um, the frame and of course 
but those familiar with the species the rose ring parakeet would know that it's no slouch it's really really fast so i would say the burst speed is definitely sufficient for me of course your mileage may vary you may expect more or need more and you can always shift to jpeg if you need more than that uh, 120 fps by the way is an absolute nightmare uh, to manage i mean god god save you if if you shoot 120 fps all the time still i'm talking about stills uh, that is just way too many frames for me to manage but if you have a very specific requirement or situation in which you need to do that please go ahead and uh, exploit uh, that to your full advantage now the r the buffer is something that is much hotly debated because it obviously depends partly on card and depends partly on the firmware version that you have because the firmware rate 1.1 was the one that enabled uh, the Z9 to shoot about four or five times uh, longer in terms of duration of continuous burst but uh, like I mentioned, I didn't have version 1.1. I was shooting at version 1 and I can honestly say that I never felt it to be inadequate. It could be just my style of photography. Maybe I don't spray as much as uh, people do. But never did I feel when I was shooting the Pelicans, uh, which was a lot of action, as you can imagine, uh, because repeated instances of these birds coming in from far, swooping down into the water, picking up nest material and taking off far into the distance all the while me tracking and shooting I can't really imagine a situation where I would want to shoot longer than that uh, by the way the card I was using was the one that came free with the camera which is the 256 GB Acer CF Express card and so your experience can vary if you use some other card but overall all I can say with complete confidence is that despite the monstrous speed and resolution uh, the Z9 is capable of it still has enough and more buffer to not let you down in terms of continuous shooting. Things like dynamic range, noise, sharpness, colors and so on. Let me be very clear, I am not going to geek out on these. I'm not going to pixel peep because there are way better people and way better companies, entire websites dedicated to scientifically measuring and benchmarking a sensor's attributes when it comes to image quality so what interests me instead is when i shoot in a real situation where i really need that high iso where i really need a little bit of extra dynamic range where i need the colors to pop out does the z9 do a job that i'm expecting my expectations come from a place where i've been using nikon cameras and generally dslrs uh, for quite a long time 16 years to be precise and I want a camera that makes an incremental improvement or is at least as good as the last great camera that I use, uh, let's say the D850 or my D780, uh, and maybe takes the game forward a little bit. So the whole question is, is it at least as good as the last great thing? Or does it compromise itself in any way in order to cheat uh, the system in order to be faster and better? And uh, my answer, quite simply after testing it, uh, in a couple of situations is luckily it doesn't its image quality definitely looks uh, to be up to expectations and uh, perhaps even better uh, who knows I mean we'll know when DxO mark or someone similar comes up with scores but from what I could see the noise is typically Nikon even at higher ISOs I mean I shot the Z9 at as high an ISO as 25,600 and uh, of course for lower ISOs as well and typically I think the performance looked at least a stop better than what I was expecting. Luckily as always the noise is mostly monochromatic even at higher ISOs the dynamic range and colors are holding up reasonably of course this also depends on the kind of light you're shooting in again don't expect miracles uh, don't expect to shoot an extremely low light at 25,600 ISO and have exactly the same dynamic range and colors as at uh, 200 ISO. That's not going to happen. It's just physics. But the question is, when you look at a 25,600 ISO image, is it usable? Is it something that a viewer can look at and not be repelled by? Is it something that it allows you to concentrate on the content of the image without being distracted by the technical features of it and I would say the answer is absolutely yes okay and 
don't get me wrong i'm going on hopping on 25600 it's just a random number that i took because one of the images i shot was with that of course as with any other camera the lower the iso you shoot at the better it is going to be but when you do need to shoot at those crazy high isos when you do need to uh, dial up the iso because you want a bird which is constantly moving to be absolutely sharp you don't want to take any chances uh, well it is black in color as you can see here with the fantail flycatcher it's sitting in the shade it's black in color and in fact i've opened up the shadows and this is already at 9000 iso and i ran a quiz on instagram asking people to guess uh, the iso and most of them guessed a much lower iso than what it actually was so all in all i'm very very happy with the uh, Z9's image quality in terms of noise performance and dynamic range and sharpness sharpness was expected because it doesn't have an OLPF and has 45 megapixels so as you can see here in the picture of my lovely beautiful wife uh detail is fantastic there's no sort of aberration uh, no real sign of any compression and this is by the way uh, lossless compressed but i'm 100% certain that even if i had shot with Uh, high efficiency raw the performance wouldn't have been very different so all in all very very happy with the image quality and it's definitely a hit so this is certainly like having a d850 or a z72 uh at double the speed and uh, which is exactly the camera that i was dreaming about or dreaming of for a long time and finally it's reality when it comes to big cameras like the Z9 it's um not exactly convenient to be using any sort of gimbal so i was very interested to see if i could get away with the Z9's in body image stabilization and unfortunately i have to say here i was disappointed especially when i compared it to the stabilization of my iPhone 13 mini which totally smoked the Z9 and blew it out of the park as you can see here and i am so relieved and delighted i cannot express that enough um, that the z9's wizardry and all these goodies that come with its extraordinary specifications do not come at the expense of battery performance the engineers have to and done a stellar job truly spectacular effort uh, to make sure of this if you want some numbers uh, then i think i shot about 1200 frames in rangantit 2 which was a mixture of pictures and videos and of course as you can imagine videos take more energy than do pictures and at the end of that shoot uh, the battery was down to only 63 or 65% which is about a 35% consumption uh, for about 1000 pictures and videos which pegs it about upwards of 2500 3000 images in normal kind of use well if i could help it i would switch off the uh, back lcd even in the video mode because it's such a joy to shoot videos through the evf uh, that i really don't need it but unfortunately in the viewfinder priority mode the z9 compels you to keep the uh, lcd on uh, it is on by default and in order to get it off you'll have to go into viewfinder only mode uh, in which case uh, even the menu will stop working on the back lcd which is not what i want despite that the fact that the z9 has so much battery endurance and can do upwards of 2500 or 3000 pictures and videos combination of pictures and videos and of course a little bit of live view without actually taking pictures a little bit of playing back and operating the menus and so on is just exceedingly creditable and in terms of um, charging speed uh, it isn't all that much of a slouch either of course in india right now in the z9s that are being sold in india uh you do not get a separate battery charger due to regulatory issues as i have explained in the unboxing video so the only uh, way for us to charge the z9 at the moment is to plug it into the electricity directly with the help of an ac adapter which of course came with the z9 uh, through usb c and uh, even though it's just a 15 watt charger the charging time is sort of similar to what we used to with dslr typically and uh, charging speed isn't so much of an issue if you plan it well enough and have a spare battery at the moment okay now with all this having been discussed what it really comes down to is whether or not the z9 scores more hits than misses i mean that is what matters really at the end right 
so let's look at the tally and as you can see it's certainly does it most certainly does i mean it has more hits than misses by a country mile and more which is a very strong indicator of the fact that the z9 is a fantastic camera takes the game forward and is a fantastic tool to have in your hands i think very tellingly the, the probably the most eloquent uh, indicator of how much i like the z9 for just the few days that it was with me is the fact that when i returned it to book my lens which i had to inevitably unfortunately i found myself missing it within hours okay especially when i saw a photo opportunity or even thought of it i wanted the z9 in my hands even though i had a d780 at home uh, which is unprecedented for me i mean there aren't many cameras that have made me feel uh, that way particularly a flagship uh, nikon camera and certainly a mirrorless camera because uh my perception of mirrorless cameras quite accurately i have to say quite fairly not unfairly has been devices that are very alluring in certain ways for what they can do with things like in body image stabilization ability to preview your exposure and therefore not worry so much about exposure compensation and second guessing the camera's meter uh some nice video features good autofocus in video and so on but at the same time compel you to compromise certain basic values and tenets and the z9 has changed all of that the z9 is a camera which does not compromise or fool around with the foundation uh, with its past with its legacy at the altar of the future and progress and fancy features it builds on what was already good and all the benefits and features that we were already used to enjoying with a dslr and then goes on and takes away some of the flaws of dslrs and builds on them uh, in order to provide a better solution and give us uh, something more advanced more useful more utilitarian more capable and that to me is true progress that to me is truly a stride forward and uh, where where you make sure that your legacy is taken care of in the effort of bringing in something new and that you're not taking one step back in the effort of taking one step forward and therefore if the definition of a good camera of a good tool is one that gets you great quality images in great resolution so that you can print them big crop to whatever you want at a great speed in a reliable way in a durable way in a way in which you feel you can count on it in a variety of situations not just to great get great images but also to continue shooting in the first place right and feel supported and feel in tune with you then the z9 is that camera and therefore that more than anything else is what an artist can ask for from a tool that he or she is relying on so do i recommend the z9 i absolutely certainly do if you can afford it this is the best interchangeable lens 35 mm uh, camera especially nikon 35 mm camera whether dslr or mirrorless that you can buy today and uh, combined with some of the lenses uh, the z lenses which have excellent traits including the 100 to 400 mm that i have just tested uh, the uh, z9 with uh, makes for a very very capable and promising uh, kit with which you can truly take your photography forward and therefore i strongly recommend the nikon z9 wholeheartedly no problems with that at all thank you very much for watching this rather long winded uh, review which has taken a lot of your time i really appreciate it i hope uh, it was helpful and was worth the time that you invested in watching it all the very best with your photography see you